safety. What do you think, Doctor? Is there a chance? It'd be better if you waited outside. Oh, please. Hundred and ten over sixty. Wake up. Wake up. What's his name? Jim. Jim, wake up. That's right, wake up. Good morning, Doctor. Oh, good, Dr. Burrow. Suicide attempt. Any reaction yet? No. Wake up, Jim. What did you take? Peanut Barbatov. Let him answer. I'm sorry. Are you his wife? Yes. Dr. Burrow's our psychiatrist. Come on, Jim. Wake up. How many did you take? How long ago did you take them? I don't know. Try to tell me, Jim. When did you take the pills? Give him a saline intravenous with a high vitamin content. Yes. Please. If he's still unconscious, electrostimulation. This way. I'd like to have special nurses with him for the next 24 hours. Why, you get anything that's needed. Well, they're kind of expensive. Oh, ma'am, you just get them. Good. Sit down. Just a few more details. Ah, now then. How'd this happen? Well, the first thing I knew, I got a phone call from his brother at about 9.30 this morning. Wait a minute. Weren't you there? My husband and I are separated. He's been living in a miserable furnished room. Go on, please. Well, his brother lives near Pittsburgh. And when he called me, it's a funny thing, I couldn't sleep all night. I, I knew something had happened to Jim. He said he just received a letter from Jim written yesterday saying he was going to take his life. I called Jim right away and when he didn't answer, I went over there. And when I got there, his landlady and I, we forced the door. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not a hysterical woman. Take your time. Well, then I called the police and I, I told them what happened. And they sent an ambulance. Why'd you call the police? Wasn't I supposed to? You might have called a private hospital and told them it was illness or an accident. This way, well, the psychiatric division of a city hospital. It's not such a private matter. Excuse me. Is your name Charlotte? What is your name? Anne. Do you know who Charlotte is? Your husband has said the name several times. Sorry, Doctor. Why don't you get yourself a cup of coffee? Hmm? Then you might phone Mr. Dog's brother and tell him what's been happening. Well, then may I come back? Well, we'll see how he is. May I see him again just for a minute? Well, just for a minute. Jim. Jim, please come back to me. I haven't been smoking. Yes, you have, Mr. Fleming. I can smell it. Now, give me those cigarettes. All right. The matches, too. Oh, dear. Now, get back to sleep. You ought to go home, Mrs. Downs. It's two o'clock. Where's his special? She went for some coffee. He is going to live, isn't he, Dr. Barrow? It depends. We have to make him want to live. Has he said anything yet? No. The things he says now are what he really thinks and feels. Later, self-deception will return to protect him. Let's see if we can get him to talk. Wake up, Jim. Listen to me. Uh. That's it, Jim. That's it. You've got to try to live. Talk to us. Why don't you let me die? Why do you want to die? Uh. Jim, why do you want to die? What does he do? 
was the director in the theater. He's not been working at it lately. Jim, do you feel you failed in your work? Or is it Anne? Or Charlotte? Whom have you failed? Jim. Jim, you've got to be all right. It's Anne. I love you. Yeah. Too late, Anne. I don't want you to love me. We'll try again later. Hello, back so soon? How does he feel today? Much better. We let his special go. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Downs. Good morning. Don't I get a good morning from you two? Hello, Anne. How do you feel? Fine. Come on now, eat this. And I have some wonderful news for you. What is it, Anne? Now you eat this first. Oh, that's not fair. What's the news? The Joe Williams office called you this morning. Jo what about? Do you remember that play you said you liked so much? Uh, they want to talk to you about it. Well, that's wonderful, Anne. What'd you tell them? I told them you're out of town until Monday. They'll see you then. Well, what's today? Thursday. Well, I ought to try to get up, Anne. Not Jim. I ought to try to walk. I want to Jim, look real you're not, strong. You're not I'm up to yes, it. Yes, I am, Anne. Please I'm... let me try. Hi, right, what's this? I want to try and walk, Doctor. I have an appointment for a job on Monday. I'll be able to make it by Monday, won't I? Well, Dr. Barrow has to recommend you for an examination first. Examination? With Dr. Schlesinger. Who's that? He's our chief psychiatrist. Well, when do I see him? When I tell Dr. Barrow, you're well enough. Main thing, when you do see him, is to convince him that you want to live. Now, let's see just how tough you are. Then you were despondent because of your work. Is that right, Jim? I didn't think I'd ever get a play to direct again. Is that the reason why you tried to take your life? Everybody has an emotional low at some point in his life, and I just gave in to it, that's all. Yes, but specifically, what was your emotional low the night you decided to take the pills? Well, I was having a friend to dinner. I was practically down to my last cent. I was doing the cooking. Who was this friend, Jim? Just a friend. Charlotte? Charlotte? In the unconscious state, you mentioned that name several times. Oh. Go on, Jim. When my friend asked what there was for dessert. I didn't have any dessert. I couldn't afford it. This depressed me terribly. Are you often depressed? Not like that. I suddenly felt that there was never again going to be any dessert in my life. So I'd probably make the grade for the essentials. But there wouldn't be any sweets. The pleasures, the comforts. Not for me or my wife or anyone else. Good morning. Hello, Mrs. Downs. How's your husband getting along? Fine. I'm hoping to take him home today. Don't let him get back in here again. No, I won't, thank you. Mrs. Downs. Mrs. Downs, may I talk to you a minute? What are you doing here? I just found out about Jim. What do you want? I wanted to see him, but they said only you were allowed. Oh, that's right. Can't I see you? You stay away from my husband. It's because of you he's here. Jim and I are in love with each other. You leave him alone. I'm taking him home with me, and I'm going to keep him there. He won't go with you. You don't own Jim. He'll do what he wants to do. Jim can't be released except in my custody. I'm his wife. Don't try to interfere, Charlotte. I'm Mrs. James Downs. Oh, yes, Mrs. Downs. Doctor's interviewing your husband. They'll be through in a minute. Won't you sit down? 
Do you suppose I can go in? Yes? Mrs. Downs is here. She'd like to see you. She's been very helpful, I understand. Very. Have her come in. How do you do, Mrs. Downs? I'm Dr. Schlesinger. How do you do? Well, this looks like the board of directors. I do hope I'm not interrupting. Not at all. How do you feel, dear? Fine. She's in pain. I'm fine. Dr. Kramer said so. Yes, medically, he's made fast strides. We've been having a little chat with your husband, Mrs. Downs. How do you feel now, Jim, emotionally about this whole experience? Well, I feel like I've been through a long, dark tunnel. Now on this side, I... I can't see what it was like before I entered the tunnel. At least I certainly don't want to. Very good. How do you feel about this, Mrs. Downs? I want Jim to forget the past. We'll start over. Yeah. We'll go home and I'll help you forget all about it. You don't understand. Dr. Barrow tells me I'm a pretty good man. And you're making a big mistake. I'll do everything I can. Listen to me, Anne. I'm not going back with you. Of course I'm taking you home. No, you're not. I'm going back to my place. To that depressing room where you tried to kill yourself? Jim, how could I let you do that? And I don't want to hurt you all over again, but I'm not going home with you. Jim, whatever your future... You don't know anything I'm about this. I'm not getting excited. I am taking it we'll easy. Talk we'll talk about it now. Look, Anne, I'm not Jim. ungrateful for everything you... Jim. I've given up your room. I've brought your things home with me. Where else would you go, Jim, if you were released? I don't know. The street, the park, any place. Oh, Jim, that's so childish. It's not being very realistic. Jim, you're not making good sense. What's where I live got to do with it as long as I want to live? Yes. Well, I'm afraid we can't let you live in the park, Jim. So we better keep you here another few days. But, Doctor, I've got that appointment for a job. Your job will just have to wait. You're a psychiatric patient in a psychiatric ward. A man who is capable of harming himself is capable of harming others. You're still a dangerous man, Jim. We'll release you when we're convinced of your adjustment to society. Now, I just think we'll transfer you to another section. You'll like it there. It's much more cheerful. They play games, have all sorts of recreation. And I'll talk to you again later, Jim. Lucky thing we let O'Malley go home last night. We'd have a tough time finding you a bed. All right, you guys. Who took the pill off O'Malley's bed? Oh, please. I love to cuddle up to it at night. I'm telling you, the thieves in here. All right, I'll get you another one. Keep that up and you'll cuddle up in seven. Is your name down? Yeah. Mine's Major. Glad to know you. Sam Tagan. Carlos O'Brien. My name is John Ancoritis. Uh, I do not know how well versed you are in the sound of names, Mr. Downs. So I will tell you that I am Greek. And very proud of the heritage of my Hellenic ancestors. You should be. Well, thank you. We have a scholar in our midst, gentlemen. May a thousand blessings descend upon your head, Mr. Major. What for? I have been in this pest hole for ten days, and no one has ever thought to start introductions. I like it. We must maintain the custom. Just being friendly, that's all. Excellent. Hey, this is good. You like it? Yeah. The doctor say I should paint. I have talent, I have ideas. When I get out, I'm going to school. I get thousand dollar a picture when I learn. How did a guy like you get the name O'Brien? My mother was Cuban. My father, he was Irish. He left my mother before I was born. Why do I hate that deal? Them student nurses want to play cards with you all the time. They're supposed to do that, Mr. Carlisle. That's their job. I know it's their job, but I don't want to play cards. They want to engage you in conversation, my dear Mr. Carlisle. I know that. I don't want to play dominoes, Chinese checkers, or any games. They wish to extract information, which they in turn pass on to the esteemed physicians. I know that, too. Oh, how I hate those Chinese checkers. That's the trouble in this place. Nobody treats you like a human being. That's right. Just because you act a little crazy is no reason to say that you are. 
It is the penalty, my dear Mr. O'Brien, for lacking the wisdom to avoid being brought here. Nobody bring me here. I come here by myself. You're mad, my dear boy. No, I mean it. I knew I was run down. I needed a rest. A friend of mine told me I could ask any policeman and he would take me to a hospital for a free checkup. I did, and here I am. That's the truth. Anyone who invites himself here ought to take a look at seven first. Say, uh, what's seven? The seventh floor. It's the violent ward. I tried to throw myself in front of a subway train. A cop grabbed me and I put up a fight, which I know now was the wrong thing to do. First thing I know, I was up on seven in a straitjacket. You ought to see what it's like up there. Nobody knows until you see it from the inside. There was a guy up there. He used to dance on one foot and play a fiddle. An imaginary fiddle. Like this. And then there was another guy who used to go around as if he was looking in windows. And he'd wave at somebody through the window. Like this. <laughs> sure, you laugh. What's funny about that, will you tell me? I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy he should go to seven. Where's the new guy? Oh, yeah. Hey, I hear you're in the theater. Yeah? Where'd you hear that? Oh, I get around. You being in the theater and all, you ought to be interested in literature. I want you should hear some of me poetry. There is a nurse with smiles so warm, but the smile conceals a heart so cold. She smiles so warm, it makes you bold, and then you find out her heart is cold. That's only the first verse. There's more. All right, you fellas, break it up. Let the man breathe. Been any army downs? Yeah. Then I don't have to show you how to do this. Get busy. Food in this joint stinks. It's worse than jail. Were you ever in jail, Mr. Schloss? Sure. I give up with Sam for two years in Leavenworth one time, and then I give him 18 months in Atlanta. What do you mean you give him? He wanted it, so I give it to him. At least in jail, you know, when you're getting out. In this stinking joint, you never know nothing. What are you doing here, Mr. Schloss? There's nothing wrong with you. I slugged the wife and kids, so the cops shunned me in here. You should be ashamed to admit it, Mr. Schloss. Women and children are sacred. Keep your trap shut, you lousy spick. You take that back. Why, you dirty little grease ball. Where do you come up with a name like O'Brien? Your mother was nothing but a spick tramp. That's what she was. She was not. My mother was a good woman. She was a good woman. All right, O'Brien. Eat your food, Downs. I'll get you, lady, you runt. Hey, don't you want that? Gene, thanks. Caritas, Carlisle, Schloss, Downs. I gotta see a doctor, Mr. Gregory. I gotta get out of here. They'll get around to you. But I tell you, I I'll can't... take it easy. Start getting anxious and you'll beat your head against the wall. But why was I sent here in the first place? There isn't a patient in this building who doesn't ask the same question. But I'm not... I see. No one else thinks he is either, eh? That's right. In this place, they don't have to prove that you are. You have to prove that you're not. Okay, inside. Oh, you haven't been classified yet, so uh, you can do anything you like. Leather work, carpentry. Here, why don't you start over here? Okay, fellas, are we all here? Yeah. yeah. Have fun. You see, Mr. Downs, we are all here. But the question is, are we all there? Mr. Downs, do you know any movie stars? Bedtime, boys. Nine o'clock. Theater must be a fascinating business, Mr. Downs. Of course, everyone knows the theater originated in Greece. Is that right, Mr. Downs? You question my veracity. If Mr. Downs says so, he's a professional. Do you know any movie stars? Oh, Brown, that's not your bed. Now, get into bed. It's nine o'clock. Light's going out. Now, can't stay here all night. I got work to do. Well, another day, another dollar. You can make up the dollar. 
what you can make up today. And this place is just gone. Downs. I'm Dr. Bellman. Sit down, please. How do you feel? Fine. A cigarette? No, thanks. Now, tell me about what happened. Well, isn't it all in the chart? I gave the details of Dr. Barron and Dr. Schlesinger. But I want you to tell me. What is the basis of your animosity toward your wife? My animosity? You refused to go home with her. Why? What's that got to do with it? Well, no man stays married to a woman for nine years without somehow loving her. Yes, I... I loved her very much, of course. But somewhere along the line... Uh, well, why don't you tell me about it? About Anne and me? It'll help, Jim. How did you get together? Start at the beginning. What's she like? She was an understudy and I was a stage manager. Anne was determined to be a great actress. I was waiting for my first chance as a director. She treated me as though I'd already made it. I liked being with Anne. She was fresh, young, yet womanly. She seemed to believe in me. Her encouragement gave me confidence, made me feel important. year, I got my first chance as a full-fledged director. And I got Anne a nice little part in the play. She was as thrilled and excited as though she were the star. I wish you wouldn't worry. A couple of the critics left the theater looking like they tasted brown glass for the first time. So, we'll each get another play. Maybe together. I love working with you, Tim. You make me feel like a balloon that's about to burst. It's a good feeling. I'll try to keep it up. Other people always burst it. Well, we won't let them. See, hey, what will we do tonight after the reviews tell us we're a flop? Go back to the gang and make everybody feel miserable, too? <laughs> we'll go to my place. I'll fix you some supper. Do you know what that sign is saying? Tonight, James Downs brought a new directorial talent to the world. A little ahead of his time, maybe. But it's good to be a little ahead of your time. That means you have a long time ahead of you. Sure, sure. Well, it's true. And if it isn't tonight, it'll be next time. And the fan says so, huh? Mm hmm Let's go back and get the papers, huh? Oh, those reviews haven't anything to do with us. Let's not bother about them. Aren't you ever going to ask me to marry you? If I only had a good blue suit. Oh, Jim, I love you so much. Now? Tonight? Well, I'll always be proud that I married you when you were a nobody. Go on. Taxi! Anne! Anne! What? You're married to a genius and you don't have to take my word for it anymore. Boy, what happened? Wait until you hear all four of them. The Times, the Trib, the News and the Mirror. Even if the afternoon papers are lousy, it'll still run for two years with four road companies, London and Paris. Listen to this. Last night's offering at the Belasco, the lemon tree, from first to last, is the product of a new brilliant director, uh, James Downs. <laughs> it's vibrant tempo and artful staging. Darling. You think that's good? Listen to this. Darling. Huh? I thought people were staring because they'd read the reviews, too. Look, here's the trip. Last night, a new genius illuminated the stage of the Belasco Theater. James Downs' direction of the lemon tree is superb. And the news calls me a dynamic force. Yeah, you had a scrapbook, these are The mirror says I'm inspired. By the way, did the Times, the Trib, the News of the Mirror have anything to say about Miss Ann Barrett? Oh, yes. She was adequate. More than that. <laughs> <laughs> 
that she was pleasing. Pleasing? Ugh, I'd rather be adequate. Most pleasing. Most pleasing. Very pleasing. That summer, Anne left the play to be with me. We spent it traveling from one summer theater to another. Half business, half pleasure. It was wonderful. The French have a phrase about love, to love sans frontières, without frontiers or barriers. That's the way we loved each other, without any fences to separate us. The fences began appearing later. In the fall, a well-known playwright handed me his latest, a play called Count Ten. It was a natural. In no time at all, I got a movie star to play in it. Some more coffee? Jim, I've read this play a dozen times. I'm just dying to play Jean. I'm dying to have you play it. I even talked to Catherine Mead about you. And? Well, you know how it is. She's a big star. It's her show. She just won't put up with it. You're too young and pretty. What you really mean is I wouldn't be good in the past. Look, I'd like to insist, but she's being difficult. Maybe you just don't know how to handle her. Huh? Sorry, forget it. Where are you going? I've got to go look at some costume sketches first. When will you be home? I don't know. There's a reading in Mead's apartment at 5 o'clock. We've got to go over some new third act changes. Jim, in your position, you shouldn't be running around to all these people. They should be coming to you. What, here? Well, then let's get a new apartment. Oh, so that's the idea. Well, that way I'd get to see you once well, in a while. Well, go ahead. You've got all my money. So long. Jim, do you want your script? I don't need it. Kennedy has a new one for me with all the revisions. Jim, I love you. Oh, Jim, darling, how divine to see you. You remember Mrs. Winslow. Indeed, I do. It's so nice to see I think you know everybody else. Yes, I do, Bob. Jack, well, Steve, how are you? And, of course, you already know Mrs. Jim Downs. Well, Anne, what are you doing here? I brought your script. I knew you had some important notes in it. Thanks, Anne. And I thought while I was here, I might read for the part of Jean. We've been talking about Helen Ainsley for that part, Mrs. Downs. Oh, Jim thinks I'm perfect for it. Oh? Don't you, Jim? Well, uh... Or doesn't he have any influence around here? Oh, of course he has. It's just that... As a matter of fact, it's not such a bad idea. Why don't we at least let her read for it? Come on in. Let's all gather around. Don't think I don't know what she's trying to do. But I won't be upstaged by an upstart, even if she is your wife. Now, just a minute, I can handle it, Jim. I know you're nervous. Returning to Broadway after 20 years is enough of a problem without my adding to it. Lots of luck. I know you'll be just one with Say, wait a minute, Anne. You can't do this. It's four days before opening. You're better off without having me to worry about. You go ahead and direct your play. I'll try to stay out of your way. And hers. Well, that's the right idea, but you certainly picked the wrong time. My understudy is up in the part. Besides, you never liked me in it anyway. I guess that was fence number one. Somehow we managed to open on time. The play was a commercial success. In time, Anne and I forgot our differences. We moved to a beautiful east side apartment which Anne decorated herself. She had never seemed so happy and fulfilled. Anne? Anne? Uh. How about a kiss? What are you so excited about? I just signed to do a new comedy. Why would you want to do a comedy? This is just about the funniest play I ever read. Let me see it. Oh, no. This one you don't even get a peek at. I'll tell you the plot. Is it such a good part? The one you don't want me to have? Now, look, Anne, you know what happened the last time. It's not fair to either of us. Your work suffers, the cast suffers. Now, before you wear yourself out laying down the law, come over here. Hmm? Come here. Don't you wonder why I'm lying around so much lately? Hmm. Doctor says to be safe, I should stay in bed all the time. 
You're going to stay in bed. What would you like, a boy or a girl? Anne didn't have the baby. And the terrible thing was, the doctor said she could never have another. Anne, darling, I'm so sorry. It's a terrible thing to do to you. To me? I failed you as a woman. Anne, darling, please. As long as I have you, you're all I need. With the loss of the baby, Anne withdrew into herself. I tried to get her to go back into the theater, but she just wasn't interested. Her entire life seemed to revolve around me. Goodbye, darling. Where are you up to? I've got those publicity interviews to do. <gasps> well, don't forget to call me. Well, now, look, sometimes it's a little difficult. All right, I'll call you. Where will you be? I don't know. I'll get to a phone somehow. What are you going to do today? You were going to take me to 21 for lunch, oh, remember? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Will you give me a rain check? Sure. Look, why don't you call up Joe Williams' wife and take her to lunch? And have to hear all about her children? No, thank you. I'll stay here. Don't forget, keep in touch. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That was the beginning of a phase in my life which I came to think of as my telephone days. Whether it was an interview or a rehearsal or whatever, I kept in touch. Boy, that sure is a long apron string. Reaches all the way from 54th Street. Don't be jealous, honey. Some good man will love you, too. Someday. I won't make him prove it every five minutes. Mr. Barron will see you now. What's it about, do you know? No, but you better get your passport ready. With the Elson play, is he gonna buy it? Who knows? Good evening. Mr. Downstairs will this way, please. Mr. Downs? Well, you're looking very chic. What's so important that you can't tell me on the telephone? A free trip to London. Our plane takes off Friday, the play opens Saturday. If it's all we expect, I talk to the author about changing the background to America, and we make a deal. Here's to London and to us. You've read the play. Why do you have to see it? Darling, the honeymoon we never had. Here's our chance. Paid for. I'm not going. Not going? You're going on business. What do you want me for? I don't get it. I'd just be a tag along. You're the one people want to see, not me. I'm jealous of you. I know I shouldn't be. But all our friends, they're your friends. All our success, it's your success. Look around you. Mr. Downs' table. Mr. Downs' this. Mr. Downs' that. I know it's wrong. I suppose I should just be happy being a wife to you. Darling, you are wrong. All the success I have is due to you. It's nice of you to say so. But you'll have fun without me. Please, Anne. I'm not going, Jim. I just don't feel like it. I was hurt and bewildered, but there was no changing her mind. I went to London alone. Don't you think we ought to be on our way? If we're going to show Mr. Downs our nightlight. An excellent idea. I'm afraid I can't. Oh, no. Nonsense. I want to hear more of those nice things about my play. Perhaps some other night. I understand. Good night, Mr. Elson. Good night. Good night. Come along, Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good Lunch tomorrow, Les Ambassadeurs. Certainly. I'm disappointed. Good night, Miss Jones. I really did enjoy your performance. Thank you. Hello, operator. I want to put in an overseas call to New York City. Person to person, to Mrs. James Downs. Jim. Oh, I missed you so much. Will you forgive me? I missed you, too. 
I was being sadistic and it backfired. You will start over. We'll stay close, close together. I'll never let you out of my sight again. We went into rehearsal with the Elson play. Anne began to stop by the theater from time to time. I didn't want her to feel left out again, so I let her. You found me in a rain of gold that sent the autumn leaves swirling about our heads. And now, Walter, the river is still there, but somehow we're different. We've changed. The words of love we spoke so, so rapturously are all lies. It's not a lie now that I love you, that I always have. No, 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 not like that. Excuse me, Bob. Look, Jennifer, darling, I know that you're beautiful, and even in the second balcony, they'll know it. But don't you think it would be nice if the audience left the theater saying that you could act a little bit, too? Come on, just for last. Try it. I'll you? try. Good. All right, let's start from the top. Go ahead, start. Do you remember that first afternoon, Walter? What was it like? Of course I do. Tell me about it. Look, Mary, I'm trying to get some work done. When was it? Tell me. It was September. Yes, she yes. She just doesn't get going. September. The days were growing shorter. Why don't you cut the scene? Along the Where? By the Before they kiss, they walk off stage together. Let the audience use its imagination. Do you remember that first dance? Awesome. What did you say? This scene runs a little too long. Talk it over with Anne. She knows how to cut it. It went rather well in London. Oh, well, I'm sure it did. But I think for the sake of tempo... Look, go talk somewhere else. Will you please shoot a question to the your fault. Some plays like some wines just don't travel well. The way the Times puts it, the English import at the Broadhead. Okay, okay. Of course it's hard, but I know later on you want to take a look at them. Just can't wait, can you? Success doesn't teach us anything. We learn from our failures. The only thing I learned was that for a director who turned a London hit into a Broadway flop, good plays were harder to come by. Finally, Anne found one she was enthusiastic about. So much so that we put up our own money. I think this scene works better here ahead of the love scene. You're really doing the playwright's work for him. No, oh, he thinks his play is perfect. It will be when you get through with it. Hello. Oh, hello, Mr. Shepard. This is Ann Downs. It's coming along just fine. We've got some new ideas for the second act. I think you'll be very excited. Uh-huh. In fact, I personally don't see why we have to go out of town with this one. Why don't we just open cold and save ourselves some money? Fine. All right, we'll talk about it then. Good. Bye-bye. Look, Anne, why do you always do that to me? Do what? Why don't you let me talk to the producer? I was only trying to save you the trouble. Treat me as if I were a child. Oh, now, darling, your business is your talent. Don't you leave all of these silly details to me. Besides, we've got money in this one. Now, the scene where Millie finds out about the doctor. Where do you want to put that? Aren't you late for rehearsal? I certainly am. Well, what is it this morning? Read that. What does it say? Trouble on the stage of the Plymouth Theater. The star, Hilary Brown, claims she doesn't know which of the Downs is directing her. A little tip to actors. Mrs. Downs always has the last word. That's not true. True or not, I can't take any more of this. Keep out of my work. Well, I was only trying to help. I know that, but keep out of my work. 
if you like. Why don't you go to Bridgeport for a couple of weeks and visit with your dad, at least till the show opens. Very well. Look, if you think I'm being unfair... No, no, I think a change is good for both of us. Anne went away. I went on with rehearsals, but... things weren't any better without her. I don't know what happened. I guess I lost my confidence. <laughs> Opening night was a nightmare. The audience laughed in all the wrong places, and the play was a flop. When Anne came back, I leaned on her more than ever. I needed help, encouragement, something to build me up. Jim, do you know my old apartment? I was down there yesterday. I can get it back. Maybe that's what we need, to get back to the beginning. It was cozy there. I don't care where we live. Where I live doesn't matter. I know, sweetheart. Don't be frightened. Everything's going to be all right. And the fan still says so. For months, I tried to find a job. I even tried writing, but nothing seemed to work. Finally, I was offered a play that I thought had a chance. Hello? Steve? I haven't quite finished yet. Just a few more pages. Call you right back. Yeah. I know you want to do it. Want to? I have to. Then I think you ought to let everybody know you're doing it just for the money. You really think it's that bad, eh? I guess I just really think you're that good. No, Anne, don't start. Now, look, that's why I didn't want to read it, but you insist. I know all that. We've been through all this before, and it always winds up the same way. Will you please just not ask me to read them anymore? As far as I'm concerned, though, about this one, I'd rather starve. I decided to do the play anyway. It was a job. By this time, it was difficult for me to get a big star for the lead. So we decided to find an unknown. Someday a man would come who would want me, truly want me, deeply and irretrievably want me for his wife and the mother of his children. I want more. Can't you understand? I want a man I don't know. I want to find him strange and difficult and mysterious. Thank you very much. We'll let you know. And uh, don't turn down any free trips to Bermuda. Thank you, Mr. Dowd. Who's next? Hey, Bert. Hello, Jim. Which one are you? Charlotte Moore. What's your background? College drama course. Oh, that's pretty frank. How long ago was that? Six years ago. No need to be that frank. What makes you think you can act? An agent friend of mine thinks I can. I'm leaving it up to you to decide. All right, let's see how you do. Stand over here. There you are. Why do you think I've put up with the noise and the filth and the work and the endless drudgery of life in this place? Because somehow I, I've always felt the most important thing in my life would come to me here. Someday a man would come who would want me, truly want me, deeply and irretrievably want me for his wife and the mother of his children. For five years... Oh, you... Wait a minute. Take it easy. Calm down and take it easy. Start all over. Why do you think I've put up with the noise and the filth and the work and the endless drudgery of life in this place? That's better. Because somehow... I've always felt the most important thing in my life would come to me here. Someday a man would come who would want me. Truly want me. That's Deeply and irretrievably want me for his wife and the mother of his children.
Charlotte. I just wanted to say thanks. I tried. I did my best. No one can blame you. You were fine. Isn't there something we can do? Sure. Forget we ever had anything to do with it. You're a wonderful director, Mr. Downs. Well. Even your mistakes are better than most successes. We'll do another one together someday. I hope so. Good night. Uh How was it? Mm. Did you see Erling and Brown? Yep. What happened? They offered me a job as stage manager. Oh, really? Because you told them no. Of course. They got so many other jobs beckoning. The man in your position has to be careful. I know, I know. Now, you mustn't get panicky. Where did you eat? A drugstore on 6th Avenue. Alone? It's not the kind of a place you take a friend to. If I had a friend. Which reminds me, it was a long time ago and I'm hungry. What do we got to eat? The rest of the meatloaf, it's in the oven ready to be warmed. Turn it on, will you? See, what are you doing? Kevin, kiss me. I thought I told you to lay off that stuff. Oh, Jim, one day we'll look back at all of this and laugh. Do you remember this one? Light the oven, will you? I'll be through in a minute. You just don't understand, do you, Anne? Yes, I do. You think the theater is through with you. Well, it isn't. You just have to be patient. The right thing will come along. In the meantime, to keep busy, I think you ought to try to find something else. Maybe we ought to move to Bridgeport for a while. Dad could probably give you a job in the store. Just as sort of a fill-in. I'll talk to him about it. It certainly wouldn't hurt. What else did you do today? Did you run into anybody? Must have met somebody who's still interested in you. Jim, I'm talking to you. Answer me. I never went back. I've talked to her on the phone since. That's all. Until here. Well, that gives me the picture. Now, what about this Charlotte? What about her? When did you start your relationship with her? You asked me to tell you about myself and my wife. I've been trying to explain why I can't go back to her. You can't go back to your wife because you would like to be with Charlotte? Charlotte isn't responsible for my troubles with Anne. She's a wonderful girl. I, I just don't want to talk about it. This isn't a divorce court, you know. You can tell me. Well, that's all for today. For today? I'll see you again soon. Miss Raymond. The doctor, I can't stay here. I don't want to play games and be observed. I want to go to work. For the first time in a long time, I've got a chance. When do I get out of here? You don't, Mr. Downs. Not for a while. Will you type these notes into the Downs chart, please? That's all, Mr. Downs. Last one, wife or shrike, question mark. What's a shrike? Oh, an innocent-looking little bird with a sharp beak who likes to impale her victim on a thorn. Who's the victim? Well, in this case, it could be her mate. How wasteful of her. I thought he was rather nice. Is she a shrike? Well, I'm sure, Miss Raymond. I'll put a period after it. It's bedtime. Oh. Everybody settle down now. I don't want to hear any noise from this wall. Not a sound. You boys keep the whole floor awake with your noise at night. And I'm not going to say it for any more, here. Good night, Miss Wingate. Don't you tell me good night. Good night, Miss Wingate. Who's that, Anchorita? Yes, Miss Wingate. And it's pronounced Anchoritis. It is a name, not a disease. Is that so? You just be careful how you talk to me, Anchorita. You might wind up in seven. I don't think you'd like that. Will you please put out the lights, Miss Wingate? I want to get to sleep. Now put out the lights when I get good and ready. You boys think you're small. The whole lot of you wound up at seven if you're not careful. Seventy-two patients on this floor, and you men are the waste. 
Mr. Downs, what movie stars do you know? I'll tell you tomorrow. Do you know Jane Russell? Shut up, O'Brien. You ever got near Jane Russell, you'd fall apart. Is that so? Yeah, that's so. In Havana one time, In Havana, time, Havana I... your mother was a tramp. I'll break your neck. You threatened me. Miss Wingate! Keep your mouth shut, Slash! Miss Wingate! Miss Wingate! Miss Wingate! He threatened me! Who? That O'Brien kid said he'd break my neck. He did? Call the attendant. O'Brien? You know what happens to people who make threats in here? Miss Wingate, it wasn't O'Brien's fault. I don't want to hear a word out of you. No point asking you anything about it, O'Brien, because you deny it. She said my mother. She insulted my mother. I don't care what he said. You can't go around threatening people. When you get to seven, you won't be able to threaten anybody. Here he is, boys. Take him up. Don't take me there! Please don't take me! No! No, please don't take me to seven! Please don't take me to seven! I don't want you go! No! Please! Please don't take me to seven! Please don't take me up there! Please don't take me! Now you may get to sleep. Don't see how I'm going to get my weight done with all this going on. Get me your bed, Mr. Schloss. Oh, Mr. Downs, there's a telegram here for you. Come and get it. You'll have to read it here at the desk and show it to me when you're finished. Here it is. Miss Wingate. That O'Brien boy really... Mr. Downs, never mind about that O'Brien boy. You just keep your nose clean. Now, what about your telegram? Well. Darling, I've been trying to see you, but I'm not permitted. I love you, Charlotte. Is that your wife? No. Well, who is it? Well, isn't it pretty clear? But you are married, aren't you? My wife and I are separated, Miss Wingate. I don't care if you're separated. You're still married, aren't you? Yes. Well, with a wife and a girlfriend, you never get out of here. Now, what does that mean? Mr. Downs, the law recognizes only the wife, so get used to it. But... There's no buts about it, Mr. Downs. I'm trying to help you. Your wife can take you home or put you in a private hospital. Or she can have you committed to the state hospital if she doesn't want to bother with you. Are you sure of that? Of course I'm sure. It's the law. Happens all the time. Well, don't the doctors have anything to say about it? Oh, they have to agree, of course. But no doctor's going to like this very much. Well, get on back to bed, Mr. Downs. I have my work to do. I'm Mrs. Downs. Downs? Okay. Jim? Fine. You look fine. Much better than you did. I brought you some candy and some fruit. Thanks, Anne. There's something else you'd rather have next time. I'm hoping there won't be a next time, Anne. What did your new doctor say? He said I'd have to stay here for a while. And I want to get out of here. Because you do. You can get me out, Anne, on your say-so. You can, you know, if you really want to. Of course I want to. But it isn't as simple as all that. Yes, it is, Anne. I found out. The night nurse told me. I don't know what the night nurse told you. But if the doctors say you should stay, they know best. They're only trying to help you, Jim. Are you trying to punish me, Anne? Is that why I'm in here? That's silly. You're upset. I can understand that. No, you can't understand, Anne. I'm the one behind locked doors, not you. You can come and go out of this place as you please. All day long, I listen to those boat whistles and those automobile horns, and I know that on the outside, people are walking around free. 
But I'm in here, and perhaps I'll never be free again as long as I live. Jim, please. It's true. You don't know what goes on in this place. You have to hold tight to keep your balance here. Everything you say and do is reported. You're constantly watched. There isn't one single moment. I shouldn't be getting so excited now. If I'm seen, it'll set me back who knows how long. You can't have any normal feelings in this place. Only continual calm. Is that normal for anyone? Jim, you're exaggerating. Exactly, my God. If I could only make you understand. I want to get out of here, Anne. I'm not a mental case. No, of course I don't. But after what you did... That's all over. I'm alive. I'm well. What I did is in the past. With Charlotte, too? Is that past, too? I know she's been trying to see you. After all, it's no secret that... That what? What is it you want, Anne? I'm only thinking of you, Jim. The doctors say you need help. And I'm sure when you're better, you know, when you get everything straightened out and settled in your mind about everything. I love you, Jim. Same old story. Thanks, Anne. For the candy and fruit. Go ahead and report me. I don't want any favors from you. Jim! What's going on in here? Nothing, Miss Wingate. The boys were just having a little game of tag. free man. I've got things to do. More important things, of course. Well, you know what Keysport's like if it got out that I had a brother in a insane asylum. You know, Jim, it sounds awful. There's Helen and the children. And it just isn't good for my business. Yeah. Are you all right, Jim? <sighs> you don't look too good. Anne says you're fighting it here. Is that what she says? You might as well make up your mind to it. They're the bosses here. Jim, you're in the hands of the authorities. The police picked you up. 
A city hospital has you in custody. If you want to get out of here, Jim, you'll have to play ball. How? Well, in two ways. First, as far as the hospital is concerned. Look, you know how to handle a cop, don't you? Jim, I never paid a fine in my life because I know that I never know more than a cop. He's the smart one, not me. So it's yes, officer, and no, officer, and, and I'm sorry, sir. If you want to get out of here, you'll have to swallow everything. Swallow. What's so tough about that? Don't I have to do it every day of my life? I've got a lousy insurance business, so I get drunk with a client, watch him make passes at Helen, and then flatter the heck out of him. Do you think I like it? It's no different in here. It's no different out there. Try it. What can you lose? A model patient, then. Try it. What else? Well, with Anne, it will be harder. She says there's some other woman. What about it, Jim? Charlotte had nothing to do with my separation from Anne. I keep telling everybody that, but nobody will believe me. I'll believe you. Are you in love with her? Look, a couple of months ago, I went to see an agent friend of mine about helping me get a job. Sorry I couldn't be more helpful, Jim, but well, I'll look around and give you a ring in case anything turns up. Thanks. See you. Mr. Downs? Charlotte, how are you? How are you? Say, it's a funny thing. I was just up to see Bert Fielding. Didn't he used to be your agent? I'm working for him now. You're not acting anymore? I got tired of being hungry, so I decided to become an agent. Which way do you go? Downtown subway. I'll walk you over. Gosh, I wish I had your sense. I'd get out of this business. You give up the theater? Before I become a has-been. Maybe I'm one already. Huh? You're not a has-been, Mr. Downs. Don't even think it. A director is someone you expect to lead other people, to show them what to do, to feel his strength to follow his direction. That's what I felt in you when we first met. You can't be gone now. This is my subway. So long. Uh, Charlotte. Is there any reason we can't have dinner together? What about... Okay. I saw her a couple of times a week after that. It was the first time in a long time that my ego was being pumped up instead of stepped on. Then, one night, I asked her to my place. Well, I know it's not much, but it's all I need. Here, let me rest your wraps, as they say. You mean you really exist off this thing? Oh, I have hidden resources. Look. Looks good. You gotta fix the spaghetti, though. I'm glad you're here, Charlotte. I'm glad to be here, Jim. This isn't fair to you, is it? I don't know when I'll be free. I know. You just want to find out if I can cook spaghetti first. like that for some time. I didn't have the money to take her out, so it was usually her place or mine. Hi, Jim. Come on, dear. Where's your cup? Did you talk to Anne today? I don't know. You said you would. 
No. Oh, well. Oh. What's wrong? Nothing. What are we having tonight? Stu, come on, what's wrong? We'll spoil our dinner. Let's wait till afterwards. No, tell me now. Jim, we're not going to have a fight about it. How can I go on loving a man who just seems to take? Who doesn't want to give? I don't mean money-wise. And I'm not worried about being married. You don't have to marry me, nobody does. That's not the point. I think maybe it's just those awful apron strings between you and Anne. And one of these days you'll snap them and then you'll be free to share what I feel. But darling, you don't do anything about it. I don't understand. Are you still in love with your wife? What is it? You don't love me. I do, I do. No, no, you don't. You just love the feeling I give you. Jim, I want to be more than a mother to you. If we go on this way, I'll wind up hating you. What do you want me to do? Make up your mind. Oh, look, now, that's enough for me. At least I've told you. What's for dessert? I didn't buy any dessert. I didn't have any more money. That's all there is to it, Harry. I was helpless, torn apart inside. If you can't live with some power at least over yourself, then don't live at all. So, that night, Charlotte had nothing to do with busting up my marriage. It was going on the rocks anyway. Well, my advice to you is to make it up with your wife. Play along with her. Wouldn't work. It might. She only has jurisdiction over you in this state. What's to stop you from going home with her, then as soon as you can, beat it and get a divorce. By the way, why didn't you do that before? Do what? Get a divorce. Did you ask her? No. For heaven's sakes, why not? It's a use. She wouldn't give me one. I just don't get you, Jim. You leave a woman because you're not happy with her, yet you don't do anything about it. Why? Well, it's your only chance, Jim. I can't do anything for you. Nobody can. Only you. Tell her the things she wants to hear. As far as the hospital is concerned, play along with them. You like it here. Jim, you want to get out. I brought you some more this time. Enough of your friends. Thanks, Anne. I can only stay a minute. The nurse says Dr. Bellman wants to see me. Anne, I'm sorry about the way I behaved last time. I guess I was still sick and confused, and I probably said a lot of things that I really didn't mean, and I'm sorry. Why, Jim... Actually, you've no idea how much your coming here every visiting day has meant to me. Thank you. We've wasted a lot of time on misunderstandings, Anne. We'll make it up. You'll see. If only I could believe you. It's true. I've been thinking things over, Anne, and I'm beginning to get a different sense of values. For one thing, I no longer have the unrealistic ambitions I had before, so that when I get out of this place, if I can just settle down to a good, steady job and plug along and just to keep going. You always want me to quit the theater, didn't you? Oh, only since it began mistreating you. Do you know, when I called the Williams office about you not being to keep that appointment. They only wanted you as a stage manager. After all you've done for them. Well, I'll find something. Jim, there's one thing. Charlotte. That's all over, Anne. She said you loved each other. Yeah. 
Well, then, if you really mean that, I think you should prove it to me. If you do really mean it, I want you to write her and tell her. All right. Just write her and tell her you'll never see her again. It's as simple as that. And what can I say? When I said that I was through with Charlotte, I meant it. If you'll take me back, I want to go back. And I'm sure that things will be better between us than they were before. Oh, they will, darling. I know they will. Well, I guess I'd better go and see Dr. Bellman. I've been through quite an experience, Anne. Doctors, you know, they're better than anyone. I'm not over it yet. For one thing, I'm still in this place, and, well, you'll just have to give me time. After all, I've been reclaimed, so to speak. I understand. Thanks, Anne. Hello, Mrs. Downs. Thanks for coming by. It helps so much to see the patient's families, but I don't often have time for it. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Have you one of these you'd like filled? No, thank you. I don't smoke. You don't mind if I do? No. Thank you. I've just come from seeing Jim. He shows a tremendous improvement. I hope you'll be coming home soon. Of course. Mrs. Downs, what do you think is the cause of your husband's emotional disturbance? That's very simple. There's a woman who's been running after him. She's got him all mixed up. Well, that can't be the only reason that he tried to kill himself. I think I know Jim, Dr. Bellman. I've been married to him for nine years. Jim is a, a brilliant man in many ways, but he doesn't always know what's good for him. When his work began to slip, he got discouraged. Anybody would. And then he met this woman. She tried to separate us. She kept after him to leave me. And of course, when she succeeded, Jim suffered a guilty conscience. He knew what he'd done to me. He just couldn't face it. Mrs. Downs, do you know what ambivalence is? You mean opposite contrary feelings? Yes. On the one hand, love, on the other, hate, and the consequent vacillation between the two. A wife can love her husband and at the same time hate him for a number of reasons. She can be jealous of his work, for example, because she's excluded from it or perhaps because it brings him into contact with other women or even because he's more interested in it than he is in his home life. A wife, therefore, sometimes tries to destroy her husband's work. The only trouble is, in so doing, she also tends to destroy the man. The more the man is damaged, the more she damages herself. She becomes frustrated, lonely, bitter. And so the cycle continues, her rage never ending, the castrating never stopping. In other words, some women make their men helpless children and then hate them for it. If you're inferring that this is Jim and me, Dr. Bellman, you couldn't be more wrong. I love my husband very much. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for him. Well, I couldn't possibly try to destroy him. Quite the opposite. Let me tell you something. Jim has always been a weakling. He's, he's always been dependent on me. All through our marriage, I've, I've tried to cover up for him and protect him. And then when he stopped me from doing that and tried to go out on his own, you saw what happened. That woman got hold of him. She is the one who's destructive, not me. Well, Jim and I have finally worked it out, and, and he's promised never to see her again. And that's what I wanted you to know. And he's going to write her, and he's going to tell her so, and that will be the end of it. No one's going to take him home. When we're as convinced as you are that he'll be all right. You'll be convinced when you see him again. Oh, I've got to go. I want to thank you very much. Mrs. Down. Have you ever thought of having psychiatric treatment? The
Did you want to see Mr. Downs' chart, Doctor? Is anything wrong? They're waiting for you in Dr. Schlesinger's office. You know, 80% of suicide attempts don't really intend to kill themselves. Otherwise, they'd succeed. Well, they do it to hurt someone, or to attract someone's attention, or to get back their love. Oh, by the way, you haven't told me. Is she? Is who what? Is Mrs. Downs that bird? You know, the one with a hat pin for a beak? Well, that's hard to say. The Shrike is intentionally destructive, designed by nature that way. But in people, well, who's to say where and why the destructiveness starts? I push the ashtray, the ashtray falls. But who or what pushed me to push it? Well, thank you very much. I'm sorry I asked you. It can be put together again. And then you think you feel differently than the last time you were here. Yes, I do. In what way do you feel differently? It's a matter of learning about myself. For one thing, I no longer have the impractical ambitions I had before. What do you mean by that? After having become a failure in my profession, I would say that it was realistic to think in terms of other work. Mm-hmm. What do you plan to do if and when you leave here with your wife? Go home. Is that all? After all, I'll need time to recover. Recover from what? This whole experience, then. Then you don't really think you're well yet. Yes, I do, but... Then why did you say recover? I only meant... What? I don't have a job. It'll take time to find something. Recover doesn't mean finding a job, Jim. I know that, Doctor. I only use the word to... How? In the sense of getting back to normal. And what do you mean by normal? Well, living here. Yes? By getting back to normal, I mean going back to work, living at home, being with my wife. And you don't really have a plan for your future. I thought I could begin by coaching actors privately. Can you make a living at that? I think so. Enough to support you and your wife? If we're careful. Of course, I'll have to look for more regular work. What kind of work? I don't know, Doctor. I'm not unintelligent. There must be something I can do. I see. Do you feel that having been here is going to be a mark against you? How do you mean? Will it be a handicap? How will you react if the people you work with know you've been in a mental ward? They know, they know. There's nothing I can do about it. But how will you feel? My work is satisfactory. I can only hope that my past will not be held against me. You feel you need psychiatric treatment when you leave here? I just don't know, Doctor. You feel you're cured? Yes, I do. Then you don't think you'll need help on the outside? No. And you feel now that you're ready to go home? Yes. When do you think you should leave? That's... Up to you, Doctor. You'll be in your wife's custody, you understand. Of course. Well, that's all. Is it unreasonable to ask 
how long it will be? I don't think so. Well, then may I know? Call your wife. What? Call your wife. She can take you home today. You may call from here. We'll leave you alone. I'm not going home with you. What? The apartment's all nice and clean. Here's the key. Take it, it's yours. I'm going up to Dad's. Dr. Bellman made me realize that... Oh, Tim, I don't want to hurt you anymore. Dr. Bellman? I went back. He told me all the things I've done to you. I'm so sorry. I never meant to. I guess it was both our faults. Whatever went wrong with our marriage went wrong because we let it. How about that letter you wanted me to write Charlotte? Oh, Jim, I'm so ashamed. You do what you want to do. I lied to get out of there, Anne. I lied and I faked. I was fighting for my life the way I should have a long time ago. And now that I'm out, I'm going to keep on fighting. That's good, Jim. One thing I learned in that hospital. You've got to work for your happiness. Come on, Anne. Let's try again. <laughs> 